Hey guys, I'm here in the studio and I wanted to make a video for you comparing AMD's new Ryzen platform against Intel's enthusiast line for audio related workloads. For the Ryzen machine, I built an 1800X overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and the max that I could clock that up to was 2,666 megahertz. Unfortunately, this platform is experiencing some limitations in the memory department that will probably get worked out. Now for the Intel machine, I went with the 6900K. This is a liquid cooled machine. I also use 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Also the CPU is overclocked to the same overclock, 4.2 gigahertz. And on the RAM, I could get it all the way up to 3200 megahertz on the overclock. So that's what I clocked that one to. Now, AMD claims that their new 1800 is a direct competitor to the 6900K from Intel, even though it's less than half the price. So I decided, let's see how these actually compare in real world tests. All right guys, so I wanna take a moment to show you what my benchmarking setup looks like. I got the initial benchmarks from dawbench.com. The idea here is to see what the maximum number of plugin instances we can run in a session. So let me show you how this works. We have a few tracks here with no plugins on them and they have an eight bar funk loop ready to play. Then down here, we have all these tracks. And what the hell are these? Well, each track has an audio file of a sine wave. So the plugins are loaded with signal and doing work. And on each track is eight instances of the plugin we're testing, set to bypass. We don't hear these tracks because they are turned all the way down, but we do hear the funk loop. The idea is that they start playing the loop back and as we're playing it, we will unbypass the plugins one plugin at a time until we max out the plugins we can use. So for my tests, I ran all these at a buffer of 1024 and a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. Now, while I love the way these benchmarks were set up, I wanted to run my own benchmarks using more popular plugins. So I redesigned these benchmarks to run a comparison of ProQ, ProMB, both from FabFilter, and Kramer Tape from Waves. Also, something to note is that the original benchmarks from DAWBench didn't include any files for Ableton. So I replicated the testing environments in Ableton and have provided links in the description to these benchmark files so you can test this out for yourself in your own setup. The metric that I used to determine the breaking point was the moment that I could hear cracks and pops in the audio of the funk part we're listening to. What I found really interesting in all of this was that Reaper could push all the way up to 100% CPU usage with no cracks or pops in the audio. Whereas Ableton seemed to always encounter cracks or pops around 70% CPU usage. And in some odd cases in my testing, I heard cracks and pops at much lower CPU usage even than that. So as you can see here in this sped up example, I eventually get to a breaking point and need to start deleting tracks in Ableton until I can get to a point where we are artifact free. In the case of Reaper, I stopped at 100% CPU usage every time because even at 100% CPU usage, we were still artifact free. All right, so now that you've seen how this works, let's dive into what the results look like. Here I've compiled all of my benchmark data for you. So let's dive in. On the first graph, we see two trends that will continue showing themselves throughout all of these benchmarks. Uh, the first trend is that the Intel machine outperforms the AMD machine in every one of these benchmark tests. The second trend we see is that Reaper can handle much higher plugin loads than Ableton can. In either case, I was pretty impressed to see how resource efficient ProMB is. FabFilter has really done a great job with coding for efficiency in all of their plugins. And that's a good enough segue as any to show you this next graph. So here's where I was really blown away. On the Intel machine using Reaper, I could pack a whopping 5,600 instances of ProQ into the session. That was just amazing to me. Uh, again, we see a pretty common trend here uh, where Intel is beating out AMD in both Reaper and Ableton benchmarks. And the other trend shows up where Reaper is just decimating the performance of Ableton overall. All right, let's move on to our third and final test. As we can see, Kramer Tape is the most resource intensive of the three. But with Reaper on the Intel machine, I'm still able to pack a whopping 240 instances in a session before capping out. Now, you might notice something funny about this graph. Oh, what's this down here at the bottom? AMD with Intel hitting cracks and pops in the audio of at only three instances? You know, I was pretty shocked by this, and I'm not sure what to attribute it to. I retested multiple times, I restarted the machine. Every time I found that 
with four more instances of Kramer and Ableton, I'd hear cracks and pops in the audio. So because of this, I decided that this was an outlier and I threw out this data point in the summaries we're about to look at on the next page. All right, and here we are, the final performance summaries. Overall, the Intel machine showed 150% performance improvement over the AMD machine, which was quite remarkable. But what was even more surprising was how Reaper pulled 360% better performance over Ableton on average in plug-in load testing. This just goes to show that software can have a much larger impact on performance than your choice of hardware. All right, so what did we learn? Well, first off, the Intel machine beat out the AMD machine by a pretty large margin, about 150% in benchmarking tests, which goes to show that the rise in platform isn't quite up to the enthusiast line yet. Now they claim that that'll change once different software developers optimize for their platform. But I kind of have a hard time believing that audio manufacturers are gonna be doing that. I can see some video game manufacturers doing that. Um, but I'm not sure that audio is ever really gonna come in that direction. Now on the flip side, we saw that by switching to a different DAW, Reaper over Ableton, we saw a 360% increase in performance. So the software advantage drastically overtook any kind of hardware advantage we might get by choosing Intel over AMD, for instance. So you could save quite a lot of money and get considerably better performance um, by getting a Ryzen machine, which is still very competent, even if it's not quite as good as the enthusiast line and going for a DAW that is much better at plug-in handling, such as Reaper. So one thing I noticed with um, the AMD machine, the Ryzen, was that uh, when it did crash, it crashed hard. The whole machine would just cut out and turn off. Uh, this was not true on Intel at all. Um, on the Intel machine, if it if I pushed over 100% CPU usage, maybe I still wasn't hearing clicks and pops, the program would freeze up and the program would crash, but the whole computer wouldn't crash. One last thing I wanna talk about is some of you might be wondering, why would you use either of these computers anyway for audio applications? And for me personally, I wanted to be able to do 3D modeling on top of my audio related tasks. So I wanted a machine that would be great for both audio and 3D modeling. I got into 3D modeling when I was just mastering uh, days on end. And at the end of the day, I still wanted to do something creative, but my ears were too tired to make music. So I picked up 3D modeling for fun. And then you saw my last EP with the psychedelic cup and the liquid flowing out. That was a piece that I did. I've also done one of the Crunk Sauce covers for Chillage Records. I did the last single we did for SO Fact. That was a cover I did in Blender. And I also um, animated a music video for the last Royale song. I wanted to be able to keep doing that and to have a machine that was very capable because I had a lot of limitations with my old iMac uh, in that world. I know these two machines have been compared a lot in video gaming, they've been compared a lot for 3D modeling, but they really haven't been compared yet for audio, and so I wanted to take a look there. But just to let you know, if you're interested in seeing the sort of more of 3D modeling video side of things, I did actually benchmark that as well. They both were very close. And for instance, in the sign bench scores, they were almost identical. Uh, in Blender rendering, uh, the 6900K still rendered faster than the, than the Ryzen at the same overclock, but they were still very competitive. And this is an arena where I think the gap was a lot smaller between Intel and AMD. So if that's more of your concern, you know, video gaming or 3D modeling, I'd say Ryzen is a great choice. You'd be saving about $700 over the Intel CPU if that's what you're going for. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, just as a future announcement, I will be rebranding my channel to Prismaphonic. I'll still have Ripple Eeple tutorials, so any of my tutorial content I'll do under Ripple Eeple, but then any of these kinds of videos, these kind of uh, going deeper into audio, mastering, mixing, engineering related videos are all gonna be under the uh, Prismaphonic umbrella. So look forward to that, and let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.